<laughs> so beautiful Kathy Weiss, thank you for joining me. So nice to see you. <laughs> it's so good to see you too, Kim. Happy Wednesday, Thursday. Yes, I just love it. And thank you for actually saying that because you're just really jumping in there with the fact that we say that time is an illusion and it's like, well, an actual fact, you know, I'm on a different day in a different time, mm -hmm. but we're talking on the same time. Exactly. I just and love we that. Did, I do too. And we did this last week and we had the same thing. And after we spoke, I was like, presence, like, it, like truly presence and the present moment. Yes. It's always a, like, I really like got it for the first time. Like it's always oh. the present moment. Yeah. So even though you're a different time and a different day, it actually doesn't matter because where we are is where we are. <laughs> it's just now. It's just now. <laughs> it's just now. We use those as markers to make it easy for us to decide when we're going to come together. But the, the truth is, it's just, it's just now. It's just now. And especially when you go into these amazing conversations like we have had before, it's like um, time doesn't exist. Right. Because it like, kind of stops. I say to people, when you're really in the current moment, time slows down. Mm -hmm. and it's just beautiful so um we are living and breathing it right now yeah <laughs> I'm like yeah <laughs> <High five. laughs> so um i really want to just get a bit of an idea of what's been coming through for you um around you know just the current state of the world and also um, just anything else that's really important that's coming through for you um, that can kind of guide us on, you know, the, the world's current situations. Situations, and, yeah. And there's yeah. a lot going on. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that people get overwhelmed or overberated is the word that I'm hearing right now, overberated into um, uncertainty about their own actions. And so um, after we spoke and um, you sent me like the little message in the world, um, the words world consciousness were in that message that you sent me. And I like got out my um, handy dandy notebook and like pages of information came through about exactly what we're talking about, like what's happening in the world mm. and what's our role as an individual human in it and what came up i'm going to peek at my notes so that i stay on track a little bit yeah. but but what came up is like this macro i guess like frame of mind like the big picture and and people thinking like why do these things happen why are there horrific fires or why is there political strife or why like why do these big, huge, terrible things happen in the world. And the first thing that came up was almost like the universe has a little bit of a sense of humor. And, and I heard it's a cosmic chess game. Mm. And there are so many moving parts and so many pieces that from our individual point of view, we can't see the whole game. And I don't play chess, but I understand that you're supposed to be thinking several moves ahead in a chess game. And so with this cosmic chess game, we can't see the moves that are coming ahead from the universe. We don't know what's lining up next. Um, and that we're supposed to trust that it's all happening for the highest good because it creates desire in people, in humans, and it activates people um, in a microscopic sort of way. So the big thing is like, we don't know what's going on, but it activates us. So we as humans, we need people to do things like donate their money, donate their time, volunteer their time. We need people to pray. We need people to craft new legislation. We need people to do all of these different things. And there are so, not just one topic, there are so many topics on which we need all of those different things happening from different people. And so what it says is, from this microscopic perspective, you get people focused with great intensity on what their role is. 
And then those people get all fired up and saying, you need to join me and you need to do it this way and you should be doing what I'm doing because I'm all fired up about going out to protest or going out to lobby the legislatures or to raise a whole bunch of money. Um, and so we're being guided to number one, honor and value when people are fired up about whatever has sparked or activated mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. um, because they've heard the call in their heart. Yeah. And like that is super awesome. And they're going to create their own unique contribution. I and mean, then the other thing is that it's our job personally to get really quiet and really still and to kind of tune that all out for a minute and see what's being activated or sparked within us. Yeah. On each particular topic. So we have to really go within and say, like, what action is being called out of me? Yes. And that's the thing you go do. It doesn't mean what other people are doing isn't super awesome and valuable and needed, but we need all of the different parts happening. Yeah. Yeah. And your part is the right part. Yeah. Does that make yeah. sense? Like your, yeah. your call, your desire is the right desire. Um, and so the universe is saying like, we want you to feel enlivened in some way. Like last week we were talking like, if it isn't fun for us, we're not doing it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it's like, we want you enlivened and we want the action that you take to feel exciting and empowering and vibrant and joy and like all those good things, because that's what feeling alive is meant to be. Um, and then it says, oh, I love the PS because I thought I was done. And then it was like, PS, <laughs> in, in any situation, you may feel called to do nothing. Yeah. And yeah. that's okay too. And there should be no guilt or shame around doing nothing. That simply means that on that subject, the universe has everything that it needs for the growth and expansion or healing of a topic. And you're, you don't, like, you don't need to do anything. It's happening. Yeah. You have to trust yeah. That's happening. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I really okay. like how you said, what am I being called to do? Because I see um, a, a lot of people may be focusing on what others aren't doing. Yeah. And it's like, well, no, actually, all you need to do is look at what you need to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because then you could lose focus and also energy on what others are doing when all you need to do is just do what you're meant to be doing. And the other right. thing that I received around this, um, particularly around victims, um, is as a collective, it's very hard for us to deal with not only being a victim, but also helping victims because of empathy. Um, and I think we've been taught to almost try and shut down our empathy because we don't know how to deal with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yet I've been shown that when you really embrace being empathetic um, and actually own it rather than resist it, not only does it turn into love, <laughs> but, but it's actually you don't take on other people's energy. So when people are empaths, for example, and they struggle with pain or whatever from other people, it's because they resist being an empath. <laughs> So, yeah yeah so, and it's it is more painful but they don't know it they just say oh i'm and a, i do see a lot of people going i'm just an empath and i have to struggle with this energy coming into me and it's like well what i received was that it's that when you embrace being an empath it's actually a strength mm -hmm. and it allows you to show up and hold space however that needs to look yeah absolutely um, and I think what I've been shown is the world, like people, it's, it's actually a human nature to be empathic. Um, but because it's painful for us, a lot of people have turned it off. So what yeah. I see is a yeah. lot of the stuff that's going on in the world today is to open up our empathic side and for mm -hmm. us to really embrace it. And I think it's just a learning again for most people to know that that's a strength. But again, we have to get those messages out there that this is a strength for you to be able to help other people and to really embrace your own empathic side, which means you then show up in complete love. Mm -hmm. um, and really I can see a lot of the things going on on the planet um, is kind of the words that are coming through. It's just kind of dividing us into who's going to show up and own their empathic side or who's still going to keep resisting it um, and projecting their own pain onto other people, which is again, the blaming or the 
you know. So, again, very much like the chess game. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, you know, who's playing what game? Um, and I always know that our intuition will always guide us. So, again, whatever feels more in tune with us or whatever we, um, you know, when we show up from that place of love, I can see that little love behind you, which is really cute. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, that's the guidance um, to place blame on others or to resist, you know, you know that pain that you feel when you take on other people's pain. Um, it actually doesn't feel good. So it'll always be the guide as to what you meant to do. But I just don't think, I just don't think humans have really been taught how to use their feelings. That's the, that was like almost like you took the words right from my mouth. I'm like, we... We don't go to school to learn that, you know, and we don't, we don't go to school to learn to listen to our soul or to learn how to follow our inner wisdom or to understand our emotions. Um, it isn't taught to us. And so we're kind of like mucking our way through um, and trying to like, some of us are trying to carve a pathway towards it being okay to feel your feelings because your feelings are indicators and they're yes. pointing you. They're like, yes. they're like, oh, you went a little too far that way. You went, you know what I mean? They're like little guide bumpers or something that show us the way. And, and when you were talking about victims, um, it's so hard to trust that what happened to them was still somehow for the highest good. I think as humans, we don't like that. We don't, not we at all. We don't like it. It's like, no. I, I do like the conversation around death as well as humans we don't do death very well um again because again there's resistance there it hurts yeah. but, but if we allowed the hurt like if we really allowed ourselves to feel it it turns into love like everything ends up turning into peace and love once you it allow does. the feelings yep. and there's also messages behind everything so um it's it's so interesting that we resist something that's going to happen to all of us yeah. Like and yeah. people go, oh, you need to live in reality. Well, why aren't we looking at this? This is, this death creates the most pain in all of us. And it also creates the most resistance. Mm -hmm. Again, we have to honor that's really what hu humans are meant to resist pain and death. Because in this incarnation, we're meant to think that this is the only one that exists. Right. <laughs> so right. If, if we, and I've, I've actually got a friend who's had a near-death experience. She said she hated it for the first couple of years of her life mm -hmm. because it made her fearless, which meant that she just had no boundaries and she had mm. no, um, she just went and did whatever she wanted to do. But again, it was risky because she didn't care if she died. Right. So <laughs> but maybe, maybe she's onto something. Yeah. So it's like, you know, if we, cause she, she had the experience of it being amazing over there. So it's like, yeah, that's actually more fun than here. So, right. I, so it's like, I don't care. I'm, I'm, and you know, I can be as risk taker as I want to. Mm -hmm. um, so, so maybe there is that human and I've been shown for us to move into full consciousness and enlightenment is to embrace the human elements. Yeah. So to yeah. be human, it's like, well, we have been given a fear of death mm -hmm. so that we embrace being alive. But in actual fact, it's been the opposite. We don't embrace being alive. No, no. And that <laughs> comes it was into... good, whoever made that up. But... <laughs> right, right. And, and I've really been like kind of chewing on that idea about being fully alive, right? That was kind of part of the message. Like we want you to feel fully alive. Yeah. And in the resistance of the empathic um, feelings of like difficult events or things that happen to other people that were hard for them, when we are in resistance mode to that, we're also in resistance to feeling the awesome things. Yeah. Yeah. We, we can't resist bad and not resist good. And bad and good is also just a label, right? It's all just is. It all just you is. You got another rabbit hole there. We it's, could. We, we could. But when we're, res yeah. yeah, but when we're resisting the things that we perceive as difficult, it's like automatically we're resisting the things that are awesome and that make us well, feel vibrant and alive. It's a universal law, right? What right. you resist persists. Uh, yeah. So if you resist the bad, you're also like 
you're, you're bringing you're more in of resistance. that. You're yeah. bringing more of the bad. Yeah. Bad, if you want to call it that. Right. And not experiencing so much of the good. Resistance yeah. is definitely, um, you know, one of the things that we do need to move through. Um, and again, just living fearlessly. Um, and I just think that there's, there's two elements that come up. There's, you know, the fear of death and um, there's also, what was the other one? Um, I've lost it now, but I think it was around, um, oh, that's right. Now I've got it. How our brain works. <laughs> so um, our brain has been created for our subconscious to record what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then our conscious mind puts a meaning on it. And so that yeah. creates that association. Um, and it's funny because the brain has been created to help us. Again, the egoic mind is there for protectiveness. So what then happens is, um, or what's supposed to happen is that it's supposed to be creating this protective mechanism around what we've experienced before mm -hmm. by hanging on to the memories and creating associations. Now that's a really good concept, whoever created that. <laughs> But whatever's going on within us is going to happen, like it's going to create the external realities. I'll give mm -hmm. you an example. Like I've got, I don't know if you can see this. I was stung by a jellyfish um, oh, a couple owie. of days ago. It's very interesting. Actually, it looks more like a, a blue bottle kind of thing. It's very interesting that we go, we go to this beach every day. I live just, I live right near the beach. Mm -hmm. We go every day. And I don't go swimming all that much because it has to be warm for me. But yeah. I went in this day. Now, I've never known of anyone to get stung at that beach. And I've also, um, my son surfs every day, never been stung. Yet, I go in once and get stung. You got it. So, and no one else has ever heard of it. Right. Because this is what happens. It's happened to me before. Now, this is very unconscious. It's happened to sure. me before. So then it's within me. Mm -hmm. Now, energetically, I'm resonating at that experience, right. which means that that experience will happen again because that's actually what I resonate at. Right. Um, right. And so I think it was a good concept to create, you know, whatever's going on within you. You can you know, prepare yourself for the future or whatever, but it's mm -hmm. actually creating patterns of it happening again. Yes. Yes. It's rather it than totally helping can. you because it's law of attraction, like whatever's going right. on within you, whatever you vibrate and you know, your frequency is at will actually happen. So, so again, who created that? <laughs> a good question, sister. That is a good question. So there's two things just don't really make sense to me because it's like, I know it was created for a reason. Well, as I'm saying that to you, of course, I'm getting more information around it. Sure, sure. Of course, they are there to create the experiences. So I remember back in a couple of years ago, because I do a lot of case studies on new work that comes through. So what I was told was to do some work around linking what's going on in our current lives with our childhood, you know. So mm -hmm. I was given a series of questions and they were, they're, they're still amazing right to this day where... Um, by asking certain questions, I was actually linking what's happening now to something in the past. So like, mm. you know, something happened before. So it's like, it'll affect like you're carrying it with you or whatever. Yeah. Can I tell you 90% yeah. of the people I worked with, we went back into utero. Wow. That's amazing. I was shocked. I thought, I thought the childhood creates the adulthood, but it's right. actually, we have a blueprint before we're born of yeah. perceptions, beliefs, and it's like I was showing that, well, now I do this work in my Keys to Enlightenment work where it's like there's, um, it's almost like a contract with yourself as to what you believe, yes. what you believe yeah. about the world, what you, how you see yourself, how you see others, everything mm -hmm. else. So that's not actually created in childhood. You're born with that to then create yeah. the childhood, to then create the experience. Yes. Yeah. So again, yeah, yeah. this, this is why we have, you know, the brain does this, it holds onto it to create more of those experiences, which gives us the feeling of being stuck. Yeah. The same same yeah. things keep happening time and time. But yes. it's actually, I think it's actually a human element. 
Oh, totally. It totally is because like you're saying, we come in with the soul contract or, and you know, I kind of think of it as like, we, we hooked up with our guides and they're like, okay, here's the lessons that you need to learn and grow and expand into in this lifetime. And so we come in with that. And then it's like, how fast can we, it's like a game. How fast can we learn those lessons? So we do, you're taught, like, this is all making so much sense to me right now. Like, okay, so we go into childhood and like some, some shit goes down so that then as we get older, we can start to learn and grow and expand our soul. Yeah. And it is totally a human thing because also at the level of the soul, we're perfect and whole. Yeah. Does that but make we're, sense? we're meant to forget that to try and remember that. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. It's like, it's like super, it's like a paradox because both are true at the same time at the soul level, we are perfect and whole and we are also here to grow and expand the soul. Yeah. Right. It's both at the same time. So it's like, and then I'll, I'm going to take it one step further. I, I will it. say another layer <laughs> Yeah. underneath that is because I also used to do a lot of power past life work. And it's like, I kept, I said to, this is back when I worked directly with guides. Um, I would say, okay, so why is it that when we clear pain from a past life that something in this life changes? I was like, aren't they meant to learn something? Like not, we're not just to clear it or to rewrite it or whatever. Aren't they meant to learn something? And what the message I received is that in actual fact, you're not meant to learn anything. You're just meant to experience it and then move mm. on. So mm. the key is really for us to let go, mm -hmm. to have the experience and move on but again the way the brain is created is to remember <laughs> yes and to like want to make meaning right i, I think it was a huge human quality to want to make meaning out of things well because i was again i was playing around with this concept of meaning the other day because if there yeah. is no meaning what and a very it's very linked to egoic mind it's like yes the ego needs to know what it is so then it can protect us. That's its job. So right. it's like, if there's no meaning in it, well, hang on, what do we do? <laughs> hang on. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's so, I love these conversations because it is multi-layered and like every layer is true. Every aspect exactly. of that is true because there's also the aspect that what we are is an extension of source energy. I call it a cosmic jellyfish because I imagine this like, speaking of jellyfish, jellyfish. I imagine <laughs> this like, this like glowing energy of love and light and we're like a little tentacle of that. And the whole reason that we're human is so that, so that source energy can have a physical experience, right? Because there isn't a physical experience in what I call the light realm, just to like reference it for myself. So. So the whole reason we're here is, is physical experience, period, end of conversation. <laughs> and we get to choose if we want physical experience that brings us joy or that doesn't. Yeah. Um, but that ultimately, that's, that's it too. We are literally just here to have a physical experience. I've, um, and, then I've, our, and, yeah, and then our brains get involved in like exactly. convolute it. I said that, I, so funny. can I, can I really, cause I want to go down the rabbit hole of another thing that you've said, which okay. is really, really powerful. Okay. And I think is a really big way that we can all, we can use this to move forward. Yeah. Is that you've said that even though that we go deeper into deeper consciousness and deeper truths, I love how you said that they're all true. And could you imagine if everyone in the world could understand that everyone's truth is also true? Like, because that's, that eliminates, I think you've really touched on something there that eliminates right or wrong. It does. And it allows people to own what is true for them there mm -hmm. and then. Um, yeah. And then what happens is that, I don't know if you feel the energy around that, when you own what is true for you there and then, you actually move forward into yeah. new truths. You can allow, yeah. it's again, the resistance of right or wrong, good or bad, which mm -hmm. we again all carry with us in some elements. Mm -hmm. um, we're just having to remember which ones they are. And <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> um, but I love, could you imagine if everyone said, you know, could honor each other's truths and then let's together look at different truths and play around with them because it's fun to feel right. one truth and then to be shown another truth or even receive another truth and then go, that feels true too. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's a little mind bending and a little mind blowing um, we just have to get that out yeah, of the way. <laughs> totally. And that's where then when we go back into like that soul contract, when we look at people who we're perceiving as like, 
bad or wrong. Yeah. We don't know what their soul contract is. Absolutely. We don't, we don't know what their soul came to learn. Absolutely. And so and it'll be and so true again, for like, them. Yeah, a hundred percent. And so that helps me like dial my judgment way down and just go like, I don't, I can't see all the pieces of this cosmic chess game. I don't think judgment I, would exist. Yeah. If we could all, if we could all live from that place of like, you're a soul learning and growing and expanding through a human experience, which is messy and, and convoluted and, and full of paradigms and paradox paradoxes, man, it would be such a softer world. It and everyone is focusing on their own journey. Like, yeah, focusing on their own journey. I just think yeah. that we, we're too scattered with our energy looking at everyone else. And it's yeah. really focusing. I, I got this information yesterday and I've put it in another group that I've got. And it said, think about yourself and your time here in this life on this planet as a holiday adventure that you are on as a break from floating around the universe. <laughs> I love that so much. We're on a holiday adventure. Yes. <laughs> and everything, everything on this holiday adventure is here for me. It's yes. all here for my experience and my enjoyment and my learning. It's like be self, like it's all for me. You've just brought up another, another element which we can talk about, which we pretend to not make it about us. But in yeah. everything, everything that we, we've got to start owning that everyone makes it about them. Everyone naturally does because it's the, our journey. It's, it's the journey that we're focusing on. And I think when, you know, the whole concept of selfish or um, not being considerate of others and all that sort of thing has taken us away from what we're meant to be doing. Mm-hmm. And so, again, we have to own that we make it about us. Yeah. And then even if we're helping others, we're still making it about us. Mm -hmm. We naturally do. It just is. So the more that we own that, the more that we will then be able to keep our focus and our energy on our pathway. And I think we can actually help people a lot more. Yeah, totally. We totally By can. tuning that in. I feel like we are, we're like tuned into the same channel because I was literally thinking about this earlier today <laughs> that, that if we focus on doing like that spark within us, that thing that like in this message says like what activates you, like I'm having this conversation with you today, Kim, because it makes me excited. Like I'm stoked. I like, I wanted to do this because it makes me happy. And now I know that other people will listen and per, per, potentially gain something from this conversation and that is exciting too but ultimately like my whole reason for being here was like it was kind of selfish yeah I wanted to hang out and talk with you I'm always successful in my business when I do things for me yeah yeah it's, and I'm, I'm questioning like why is it that when I become the uh you know the martyr that you know has to be saving everyone and you know helping everyone and everything else when i do that in my business it just stops starts to tank mm -hmm. when i do it for my own benefit <laughs> and it's interesting i saw something about leaders today and the fact that as lead for from a leader perspective um leadership is actually being the follower as well as the leader, the student, mm -hmm. as well as yes. the teacher. Yes. So um, that's definitely, you know, where we're heading more towards rather than this person up there that's teaching. It's like right. we are all still learning. Like I always say to people, because people want to be there, you know, like why can't I just get to where I want to be? Like well, uh, it's taken me 30 years and I'm still not there. I said, darling, if you were there, you'd be floating in the sky with angel rings. <laughs> so true. It's so true. I, I agree with you 100%. If you, if you got it all and figured it out and you, were, and you like didn't have any more lessons to learn, you'd go back. Yeah. Although, can I just say, again, from a soul, soul perspective and, and yes. not trying to speak about anyone in particular, but what I've also seen is that when you go down the rabbit hole of all the different layers within us, that is actually a deep seated fear that if I have no adversity and if I have no more lessons to learn, that I will die. I die. 
So guess what? We create more and more drama. Oh, oh, it happens. Yeah, I, I saw it in someone the other day when we went down the rabbit hole, and I'm like, they're like, I don't know why this keeps happening, and it just showed me all the layers, and I'm like, you actually have a fear of dying if you have no adversity, and it was true. Mm. And um, and so it's like we talked about ascension and the fact that back probably even 20 or 30 years ascension meant that you were going to die and I remember I went and had a psychic reading before I could do it myself um you know about 20 years ago and they said you're going to be you know have a big part in the ascension process and I'm like okay I don't know what ascension is so I googled it I googled it and it actually said that dying leaving the planet ascension I'm right. like, so did, was this psychic telling me I'm going to die? <laughs> like, right, or I'm going to lead people to their deaths? <laughs> or just myself, I was, you know, yeah. come back to me. It's like, oh, right. my God, I'm going to die. Yet what Ascension has started to change into is actually the death of the old into a new. Mm-hmm. Um, and so explaining this from someone whose soul, soul blueprint is – if I don't have adversity or if I don't have issues in my life, then I'm going to be this angel in the sky. Well, in actual fact, maybe in the third dimensional reality, that was true. But now because we have access to more dimensional realities, um, we're still allowed to be here. Right. But not be in that. Yes. Totally. Again, if we're in that, that's okay. Um, but we're, we're not in it from that consciousness of right. it's adverse. I mean, for me, when adversity shows up and, and I click into consciousness, it's actually a fun challenge. So, you know, it's part of the chessboard game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and we don't have to be experiencing adversity. We can, we can be choosing to experience the fun and the game. Exactly. And what if that never runs out? And that's exactly the truth. That's it. It's, right. And you can see it's just perception. But we're born yeah. with the perception that adversity is bad. Again, part of the blueprint. Right. Um, and I don't know anyone really who doesn't really have that innate right or wrong, good or bad, which is driving. Yeah. I find it's actually driving us to a point where we change our behavior and who we are. Again, mm-hmm. part of the experience of to know who we're not, to find out who we are. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But we're, we're, we're really moving away from those games and just stepping into, um, again, the consciousness of the fact that this is just one stage yeah. um, that we've choose, chosen to incarnate on with other people who are also playing their roles perfectly for us, by the way. Yes. Yes. <laughs> they totally are. It is. Uh, my, one of my favorite phrases is imperfectly perfect. <laughs> Right. We are all doing it imperfectly perfect. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. So what, what do you receive or or what have you received around the awarenesses for the next stage of, of, you know, for humanity and moving forward? Where we're going. Um, This, what, what I feel kind of strongly to share right now, and it will probably shift and change as the conversation moves forward. Um, but it was almost like we've just turned a new decade. Mm-hmm. And again, the time is an illusion, but in this particular turning of this decade, we really have started to turn a new chapter that I think some people opened up for us probably like 20 years ago or maybe 30 years ago. I was probably like 30 years ago, I was probably a little bit too young to be paying attention to, you know, that kind of stuff. But I know that the 10 years prior to this, the 2010s, we all got really distracted and enamored by social media. Mm -hmm. We all got super like, pulled in a direction where numbers gave value, where images gave value, and we thought we were connected to one another, but we became more disconnected than ever. And it's like, as this decade is rising, we're realizing it was kind of a sham as far as like true connection. 
and I feel like we're starting to come back to almost where we were 10 years ago, except with this new awareness that like, that didn't work. That whole experiment did not make us feel closer. It made us feel farther apart. And what we're all yearning for is to feel closer to each other and to really experience that oneness and to really experience that like we are all ultimately unique expressions of the same thing. We're really trying to learn that, I think, as a humanity. And, but there's just so many disparate parts that it's going to take time, but that we've turned that corner. And we're on, we are, we're on like page one, chapter one, paragraph one yeah. of this next thing. We're like way at the very beginning. Mm. And, um, and so patience. And that when feelings like uh, um, anxiety or frustration or like, I want it, now, I want to be there now is to go, like, you're, it's okay. Yeah. It's normal to, it's okay to feel that way. And it's normal to feel that way because you're yearning for the highest good that is evolving. And it's like, can we let that yearning help call it into being? Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm um, also like, I really love how you brought that up because you can see that people are starting to move away from social media, from being in it for 10 years or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think also well, what's coming through when you say that again, going into another element around that is that maybe social media in a way was that first stepping stone to this next one. Like you always yeah. say, everything's that imperfect perfection. Like, so, yeah. so I feel like that maybe what, because I know myself, we would not be even connected if social Correct. media was not around. Correct. So in a way, um, I think it was kind of like planting the seeds to that we are this one internet world, like the mm -hmm. World Wide Web, yeah. which um, maybe social media was the stepping stone or the first step to the oneness because before the internet, we were different countries. Totally. And different time zones. <laughs> Bringing it back to the beginning and different days. But you can see what maybe social media and technology has done is actually brought us, it's actually showing us oneness. Yeah. But in a different form. Exactly. We had to kind of get like, get it out of our system that the number of likes and comments and follows weren't the value. Well, I think it that was by sense. people, by people feeling bad about those. Yes. Yeah. Has actually um, helped, well, hopefully have helped them to then look at what is valuable to them and in most cases god everyone can get sucked into that especially if that if those likes are for a purpose whether it's for fame or popularity or business or whatever mm -hmm. but at the end of the day um it's again the external representation which we right. know when we make anything external you just lose your power and um, yeah. you just got to tune within your own power. But I, what I'm being shown around exactly what you've just said, and I've never seen it before, but I just see that these last 10 years was really just to shift our consciousness around separation into oneness. Mm -hmm. And now that we feel, we do feel, we probably would say we feel more connected because we have more access, yeah. but now we're ready for more. Yeah, that's a good way of phrasing it. Yeah. It just feels like that, that was that, as you said, chapter one, it feels like that, that is that step one in oneness. Yeah. Um, we will still use maybe social media or some of these in, you know, technology devices to keep the connection going, but they're not going to be, yes. I don't think the focus will be on them. I agree. We I just got to, you know what, we just have to, um, this is going down another rabbit hole. It's okay bring it <laughs> because then it went into okay so if we're if we're coming into this oneness and social media is not going to be the be all and end all that there's more i then go well okay maybe we're going to be flying everywhere and seeing each other and i got told no we just have to create the portals to oh yeah we do yeah we do yeah okay. we do <laughs> yeah we do um yeah and the word that came up for me also when you know, about like that chapter one in social media. And I, I, I saw like a toddler 
Like the last 10 years, we were all toddlers. Oh, yes, it feels <laughs> and, like that, doesn't and it? And we were like, and we were kind of like bumping around and falling down. And it is a good tool. And I agree. I have made some amazing connections mm -hmm. like this because of social media. And so I don't disparage it, but I do think we just hadn't, we're still learning, yeah. right? It was brand new for all of us. So we were like, is this how you use it? I, I don't know. And you know, kind of like bumping around in, in our growth. And it was, it was just another way to grow. And still thing, is. Yeah. The thing that's like now coming up. Now we're, yeah. Like a, like a thing that's coming up now around something that's coming to my awareness is, you know, the whole, and I'm not going to go, we're not going to go into it because we just don't play in this energy, but the whole yeah. conspiracy, you know, all those mm. leaders of the planet who aren't really the leaders or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Um, you know yeah. what I'm talking I don't, about? I, yeah. Um, I keep thinking if that was actually true, we would not have access to this. Yeah. We would not have access to this if, like I think there's creators and there's innovators and there's world chain. Like again, I think we're going to go into this. I want to move into this next conversation, this mm -hmm. world changing. And yeah, I think if there was really people running the show, we would not have access to this because so many people are doing so much amazing thing through technology that um, we're able to have this access. Right. If we didn't have this access, then that would make more sense, but we do. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, yeah. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Um, which then goes, I really did. And this was what I was showing before we came on our call is the concept of world change. Mm-hmm happening it's happening right before our very eyes i've been guided for us to really look in because it has been something that a lot of people have been focusing on is making the difference changing the world all that sort of thing whereas i again i kind of see it all as a perfect it's that perfect place mm -hmm. where everything is happening for us mm -hmm. So that then doesn't make sense if we want to change it. What if, what if change isn't quite the word? Mm. I think it actually does. I think world change or changing the world, world change actually does need to change. Yeah. <laughs> because it's saying, it's saying, so the, it kind of ties into that idea of perfectly imperfect. Yes. We're perfectly imperfect. We have experiences. They grow and evolve and expand us. The same is happening on the micro. That was kind of what, like that first message, microscopic and macroscopic. Mm -hmm. What if it's that the world doesn't need to change? What if it's just that it's perfectly imperfect and that it, like the rest of the universe and the cosmos, is growing and expanding? And that is true. <laughs> and so we didn't then, resist. Can, and then we can, didn't <laughs> resist. Let's go back. And then we don't resist the state that it's in right now, but we accept with a peaceful, loving heart. We don't this resist how, this is, the state this is where, where we're, yeah, we don't right? resist the state that it's in. And I think that I've got goosebumps everywhere around that. Me too. So I'm going to write that down. We don't resist the state that it's in. Right now. And I think that's really why I wanted to have this chat with you around world change is that focus needs to shift. Mm -hmm. um, it brings up, don't resist where we are now, like in yeah. the world that we are now. I have people ask me, and I did, I, I did get asked this question. I was so excited to get the answer because I didn't know the answer either. But when someone said, I have a big, a big, I have an issue with accepting the current moment because that means that, um, or accepting things as they're happening. You know, I, I can't accept them because that means that I'm not making a difference in them or I'm not changing it or, you know. Mm. And I said, um, I, think, I think our level of acceptance, you know how we say, you know, accept, you've got to accept what's going on. I think what, where we all get stuck as humans is that we think the, the level of acceptance is for all time. Um, right. However, what I was showing is that the level of acceptance needs to just happen right now um, where it's happened. 
right now, whatever is happening has happened because it already it's in the past right. <laughs> and each moment keeps changing. Um, so to resist it just creates more of it. Yeah. Again, it because it. it persists it. So if we go into acceptance of the current moment and whatever's happening in the current moment, that then opens up the space, if you want to call it, to do something different in the next moment. And that, I think that's where um, the whole passive level of just accept, just accept what's going on, you know, just accept it. It's actually not saying that you're doing nothing about it. It's actually saying that you're accepting it's already happened. Exactly. It's not, it's not lay down and capitulate. It's, but that, I think that's what people think accepting think it the current is. moment is. But mm -hmm. what it does is it changes the energy from problem oriented to solution oriented because you can stop hammering on the problem and start exploring the solution. And I think, I love how you say exploring the solution because this, when you explore the solution from that place, it's more expansive mm -hmm. and you tap into, you know, what else is possible rather than I don't want this. Yeah. And as long as you don't want it and you stand there with your arms crossed, <laughs> it's just going to be right there at your back knocking on the door going, hello. Hello. So that's moving me. This, this, that's moving me into my next awareness that I wanted to talk to you okay. about, which is around um, old societal paradigms, things that we have been taught that we thought were true, and then now we're getting access to. You know, um, I'm going to just call it different, not higher or lower, but yeah. different consciousness, which shows us different truths. Um, I kind of feel, well, from a human perspective, a little bit cheated that we've been taught this way and we thought that was true and we thought we had it all sorted. Yeah. Um, and then now moving forward, we realise that that's actually not what it was all about and it's this. Has right. there been any elements in your life that you, that you thought were true and then through doing this work you just learnt that there was just no truth to it at all? Yes, a hundred percent. And I, I feel like this is more common in, um, in people that are in our age range than the generation that's younger than us, because we're sort of, um, I had, I, I was speaking with someone else, um, around my similar age and she was like so mad at how long it took to get to this awareness. And like, there's people 20 years younger that like get it. I'm like, that's because we're carving the path. Yeah. Our generation is like the bridge between the old paradigm Beautiful. and the new paradigm. Mm. And so we've been out there in the trenches with the shovels going, oh, look at that shovel. That was a bunch of bullshit. Thank you. <laughs> right. And, and we've been like carving this new path. And so, yeah, it's taken us time. Hallelujah that we got here. And you're welcome young people. <laughs> You're so, and I'm like, I'm stoked for them because they're not going to have to work as hard to get here as we did. Oh my God. You have just brought up something else. Okay. If I've seen a few videos out there around that generation, I don't know what the generation's called. I believe they're called the millennials and okay. there's probably even a newer one behind yeah, them now but yeah because yeah, they're having children but because time is just flying oh my god <laughs> we're in 2020 <laughs> us, us 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 gen xers are starting to sound like get my cane anyway <laughs> no no anyway um so i wanted to have a chat with the universe around why there is so much mental health issues um mm -hmm. mainly because um I have, I saw um, a video from someone who actually, um, you know, does video, you know, inspirational yeah. videos. And one yeah. of the things, it was an explanation of the millennials, for example. And one of the things he said is that we have to, you know, it was a different generations, you know, this generation says, well, we struggle with this and this and this. And this generation is, is actually saying we're struggling with mental health issues. Mm. Like they're owning it. They're just saying we are all struggling with mental health issues. And I'm mm -hmm. like, why is mental health such a big issue now? When it wasn't really, I mean, 
we can't we can't just say because we weren't aware of it i'm sure that there were people who had mental health issues before and mm -hmm. hit it sure but i don't believe that all of a sudden they're all coming out of the closet i think right. well so i received the information i just said why especially young people who technically really have nothing to worry about mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. are stressed overwhelmed <laughs> and the universe actually explained it perfectly is because again if you incarnate as a person on planet earth you're meant to have adversity now if they don't have any oh my god that's like yeah if they don't have any they don't have any in the physical sense yeah they're going to have one in the mental sense yeah interesting i'll just leave it there <laughs> i yeah i i feel like that's like that's a whole nother that's chapter two <laughs> <laughs> um there is no physical and again i think if we can look at reality in most people's cases i'm not going to say everyone of course Mm -hmm. but most people have a pretty good life yeah so if our purpose for being here was to learn and grow from adversity that doesn't that doesn't actually fit into why we're actually here because we're yeah. can i can i drop it sure. because we're the paradigm is shifting to where we learn and grow from joy but they don't know that yet because not yet <laughs> yeah because we're in the shift we're in the shift right <laughs> Yeah, and so like the, the evolving consciousness hasn't caught up to that yet. So yeah, those with mental health, and I'm not saying the, the actual chemical, blah, blah, blah. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about those people who just can't deal with life at the moment. Yeah. And I'm just saying at the moment because that's the only thing that we need to focus on is what's happening right now for them. Mm -hmm. um, they're not dealing with life at the moment. However, that's been labeled or look or whatever. I've been, and then just as I'm saying that now, the, this is this is the um, the shift that we all need, which is saying, okay, before there was resistance to talking about mental health, mm -hmm. now it's acceptable. So again, it's the chapter one, chapter two, mm -hmm. and then the different. But I don't think, and then talking about you know the future for us, we're in acceptance at the moment. Mm -hmm that there are mental health issues. Yeah. Um, and that is awesome. Um, I used to not think that. <laughs> yeah. I used to say, that's changing anything. Like, <laughs> but it's because it's, this is what I've been showing. Thank God we get shown the guidance to put us back right. on track as to where, yeah. we're meant, what, where we're meant to be going with it. Is that it's just the stepping stone. So everything that's coming out mm -hmm. now, whether it's the concepts of climate change or the concepts of mental health or whatever thing is coming up in the forefront is for us to accept it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So again, if we look at that from a place of if someone in the world is suffering from mental health issues, I don't know about you, but you can already feel even though even though they may know that they have it there's still resistance to it mm -hmm. if we can start to really look into how we can accept that this is part of the incarnation on this journey around where we're at because it feels bad and again it comes back to feelings we can't resist the feeling bad right. because it's part of what's happening so I think again, if we say, well, if I accept the feeling bad, that means it's going to last forever because this is what we were taught mm. back in the, we were taught back in the eighties that what you ask for and what you accept is going to be what's happening. Right. And back in a third dimensional reality, that is actually true. And that's where as, you know, especially as spiritual workers where we've shifted our consciousness into different ways, what we were taught back there is what you put out there and what you ask for, you get. But then the universe actually said to me, ask for all the adversity that you can have. Ask for it. I'm like, no, no, don't <laughs> right. come to me. <laughs> right. No, no. So then again, the shutters went down. Everything got 
slowed down and I'm like, God, <laughs> fine. Okay. So I said, okay, give it all to me now. I can deal with it. And guess what? Nothing happened. And I'm like, what are you doing there? <laughs> and it says, we wanted to show you that it's the resistance that keeps the thing there, not what you ask for. So mm. I, think, I think from a place of, say, mental health or whatever anyone's going through, the whole concept of accepting it and owning it and being in it and being okay with it, we've been taught that that creates more of it and, it's that, and people have a fear of it being there forever. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that actually was true back in that third dimensional reality. That did was true but and this is what i want to say the old ways of doing things and it's confusing especially when you're an entrepreneur <laughs> and you've learned how to run businesses in that form mm -hmm. it's different in this one yes <laughs> and so again i think we resist like people who even own that they have mental health issues still have resistance to it sure. because they feel bad mm -hmm. And they think if they accept feeling bad, then that's going to last forever because that's actually what I'm accepting and in, in a way saying that I'm happy with feeling bad. Right. But it's right. this paradigm shifted. Yes. The acceptance of feeling bad actually leaves it back there. It but does. They don't know that yet. Not yet. I've had that experience myself. So I know exactly what you're talking about. And as you, as you were describing that, like I could, I could literally feel sparks in my brain on a, on a, per, like on a deep, deep personal level of like where I just accepted an aspect of myself. And it was like the moment I did it, it didn't exist. It like literally didn't exist anymore. I was like, what the just happened it's like, actually very it weird it's very so very crazy weird. it was so yeah. crazy and I've seen that I used to have multiple panic attacks oh like a week like non-stop um and I had a teacher kind of like smack me down a little bit about it and she was like uh, I was in a yoga teacher training and she was like you're gonna do your big project on anxiety and panic attacks and I was like I don't want to do that and she's like no that's what you're gonna do and like literally the moment I just went, okay, I have panic and anxiety attacks and my homework is to do this research, blah, blah, blah. Phew, gone. Oh, yeah. Gone. I don't, I, I haven't, I can't even tell you, it's been years since I've had a panic attack. Um, and it's, and it was exactly, it was like the moment I stopped resisting that, yeah. gone. Oh my gosh. You are like, you're on to, like, that's huge. That's huge for people. It, it is. Um, I think it's, um, again, where, whenever, um, you know, wherever that's meant to go, it just is. But, but I think it's, it's just because, you know, again, as, you know, us in this, in this generation and we've had children and we've, you know, gone into different elements and we're still carrying on old paradigms, even in yes. our DNA and in our, yeah. in our cells, which then gets transferred to this next generation. Right who thinks they, they just, and we still, we teach without even knowing. And I'm, I'm like, I, you know, I've got four children, so I still do teach old paradigms without knowing it. Yeah. Even though yeah, I teach absolutely. new paradigms. Yeah. Um, and it's just that um, in the old paradigm, it was true that if you accepted something as is, then that would be creating more of that. For, yeah. And it was there forever. Yes, yeah. but it's different now. As you said, when you experience acceptance and you allow it and you, it all of a sudden just disappears. It just mm -hmm. goes. And mm -hmm. we're not saying, again, it was wrong back then and this is right or whatever. It's just different. But I always, always go back to that we chose this incarnation to have this experience yes. of the shifting paradigms. And I don't know. I've actually been shown that really ascend, like high ascended masters have actually incarnated in this yeah. life because this has never, I say this has never happened on earth before, but it has, no, but not in as earth how it is. Yeah. Yes. There were two other um, life forms, I will talk, we'll say on earth, mm -hmm. earth. So there were two other choice chances of having this experience of shifting paradigms in one lifetime. Mm. Um, much, you know, I'm talking 
literally in the years that don't even exist in our conscious awareness sure. of years, um, which, which you could actually experience that. But um, most of us who are experiencing it now have never experienced it and have incarnated in this life to experience it. Mm -hmm. And it's funny um, when I, you know, whether I do a group or workshop or whatever, how these ascended masters turn up and I go, whoa, hi. <laughs> yeah. In human form, I'm like, you're here to, to have this experience as a human. Yeah. Shifting paradigms, like, welcome to. <laughs> right. Welcome to our crazy party. Um, because even those ascended masters that actually haven't had earthly incarnations are here. Yes. Yeah. It's so much fun. So much fun. And we've it is. signed up for it as well. So. Exactly. Yeah. And I feel like if we can look at it from that perspective of fun and kind of laugh at ourselves a little bit, you know, like the thing, like the things that you, we recognize as resistance and we let them go if we can kind of laugh at ourselves about it and be like that was kind of funny like it just soft it just softens the whole thing i think like abraham hicks says like there's nothing serious going on here every once in a while i have to remind myself of that like it it is and yet it isn't at the same time it's like that was funny you <laughs> like I really, and I'm glad you've said that because I did get an awareness before, especially when we're talking about victims and people going through hardships and everything yeah. else. Um, and in, in, a, in one paradigm, it's a slap in the face for us to say, well, this isn't serious. Um, and with, um, with anything that anyone's going through, um, I think it's just really cool to look at just the different awarenesses around how we can react to them. And, yes. and I think that's where, again, a lot of concepts around spiritual bypassing and, you know, all of that that's going on. Um, if there's so many different voices saying very different things around everything that's happening. Yeah. Um, and it's just really interesting to look at, yes, this is not serious, but yes, to other people, it does look serious. Correct. And that's, and it is serious. Like, so I think again, it's bringing that empathy in and for us to own, um, we can, we can in our own minds have the awareness of the bigger picture kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think you'll agree with this, that it's, there are people that just don't see it that way. Right. And that's okay. It's okay. But we can't project, like I see people projecting their opinion. Again, yes. follow, be on your own path pretty much. Yes. Yeah. Because they're saying, well, you know, love and light yourself and you'll be fine or whatever. And again, people are like, but these people are struggling. That's not the answer. Um, and again, they're all true. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um and it's, i think that i wanted to kind of touch on just that yes it's not serious yes we're all transitionary we're all just here you know playing roles for each other everything else mm -hmm. but yes this is also true yes. um i think what we can do maybe as empathic humans is yes, we can be on this path for our own lives, but we also need to acknowledge that others aren't. Correct. And I think that that's, that's where, again, in the spiritual world, it's a little bit, there's a little bit of angst going on around. Yeah. How we need to, again, move forward um, as a society and as humans, um, not to love and like the world, but to actually just understand from an empathic point of view as being humans that there are different um experiences for everyone mm -hmm. and the thing that's just coming through around especially because the i know you're moving here soon yeah. um, but especially in australia how uh the bushfires and and how they affected um, everyone here mm -hmm. i really was just shown to hold space and Holding space is also okay. Um, I think we're moving from fixing things because I find, um, and 
God, don't strike me down. But I still also, I also find like with Louise, Louise Hay's work and things like that, um, how, because I do, med like I do work, work in metaphysics, but metaphysics isn't working now because metaphysics is actually bringing an old issue into the current moment. Mm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work. So I've been given right. a, a new thing, which is metagenetics. Awesome. I'm playing around with that now, yeah. Um, yeah. which is taking elements of metaphysics, but it's actually bringing it into um, what's currently happening because, mm -hmm. because if we just focus on what happened, um, again, in the past paradigms, that would actually be something that we could do is actually say, let's learn from this, but we're guided now to move into it's happening and it's happened. We have to accept that, but then do something different in the next moment. Um, and that doesn't actually follow metaphysics. Like metaphysics is actually saying learning from what's actually happening. Mm. I'm not a metaphysics expert, so. It's actually really that. interesting. Um, it's very interesting, but it, it, again, it comes into, um, and I've also been shown, especially as a parent, but also as someone who is on a planet seeing people suffering, Yeah, is um, really at the end of the day, holding space and also um, being the example mm -hmm. um, of being, you know, empathic or, you know, really embracing it and saying, I'm sorry, you're going through this, all that sort of thing um, actually helps other people to shift their consciousness. Yes. Uh, and I think that's, you know, moving forward when we're, when we're actually looking at humanity moving forward and when, where we're going to, um, projection just has to quit. Yeah. 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 Just, yeah. <laughs> it's like end of the sentence period. I know. Right. That's it. <laughs> yep. Okay. I got you. Projection got just it. needs to quit. Um, and I think for most people to fix things, that's what they're doing is projecting their own beliefs and their own mm. experiences onto others. Um, mm -hmm. But that also comes from the, of not owning their empathic side. Right, right. And I'm being shown as humans. And it's very hard for spiritual work, workers who actually do see the world very differently. Mm -hmm. um, they could just be in that zone. Um, and as humans, we do need to still be holding space for those who are transitioning into their own awarenesses and their own learnings, especially yeah. if they are suffering massive tragedy. Yes. Um, because I've caught myself going into the theories, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the spiritual theories yeah, yeah. and philosophies of why things happen. Yeah. Um, we can't say that. The reasons why. No, 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 not really. Because Just cosmic chess game. Each person's incarnation will be or have their own reason. Exactly. Um, and again, I keep being shown, uh, you know, from that universal soul perspective, um, you know, there's a reason behind everything. And I don't know if you've seen this before, but, you know, um, if you go into acceptance and someone goes, well, you know, I was just raped or someone just attacked me and you're telling me to accept that. Um, it's actually saying accept that it's happened and choose to act on it in the next moment. Um, yes. Because I think it's the resistance that it's happened that is keeping it again, what you resist yeah. persists and it's just, you know, holds us down. So it's just, again, the chess, chess board of, of different awarenesses. Um, and the thing that will help us is actually just our intuition, mm -hmm. how, how we feel, if it feels good. And I, I heard something the other day, which I kind of went, mm, that's interesting. Don't always do what feels good. I was like, hmm. what do you do then? Well, I'm curious where that one went. I, I have, I have, <laughs> I have thoughts, but I'm like, where did that one go? It came to my awareness that actually that was yeah. something that was on TV or something. I don't know. Okay. Don't yeah. always do what feels good. And by doing, doing the keys to enlightenment work, what I've actually found that people do get actually get their feelings mixed up with their thoughts. Oh, sure. Yeah. They think that they're feeling something, but it's actually a thought. So let's mm -hmm. just say that someone's a mass murderer. Mm -hmm. That makes me feel good. Well, actually it doesn't make <laughs> you feel good. It actually, <laughs> it is actually just a coping mechanism. Right. And you've got to know the difference. Yeah, sure. And that takes practice. 
So it of does. within. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Of going within. It really does. And, and if we want to talk about resistance and maybe a beautiful place to kind of close would be that, that the ultimate resistance is, is going inside because yes. it's like, well, I'm terrified about what I might find in there. Um, but, or I think most people just don't know how to. Or they don't know how. Yeah. And so again, there's resistance or that they're going to do. I've also heard people say like, oh, well, my mind, I was thinking too much and so I did it wrong and so I'm not going to try again. Or, mm-hmm. you know, there's like so many different stories around why we don't want to get quiet and still and go within. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, that's where all the answers are. Because yeah. the answers are in, again, acceptance and what is the next right action. Yeah. The, next right, the next right action is in here. Even if it's like go get help from someone else or go do this or go sit in hold space or go sit in peace. But that's where it is because yes. it's, coming, it's coming from someplace higher than you anyway. So um, I'm not quite sure where I was going with that other than – well, the thing that I'm getting, I'm getting around that again, all the layers that come up because I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to do some multi layers coming up now is, is what, what I'm being shown as you're saying that is trust because that's the one thing when people hear something from within them, they don't trust that it's their voice or that because I think they've had so, there's so many different voices within us yeah. that it's just, or they don't they don't trust it because it sounds just like their voice. That's another big one too. Their voice has been saying not very nice things. Right. Right. And so it's like, I don't trust it because it's my voice. Yeah. So if (laughs) if their voice is actually saying something that's helping them, they're like, well, I'm making it up. Yeah. As I'm saying that I get shown, well, how often are we told that in upbringing? You're making that up. So much. So much so, it's like painful to hear that. Yeah. So people yeah. then say, I just need to, I'm, I need to learn to trust myself. But it's really interesting when that happens. I just keep getting shown all the different consciousness levels underneath it. So Sorry. it's like, okay, so if you need to trust yourself, that means you don't trust yourself. So again, it's the same paradigm. And I look at third dimensional realities from a scale level of it's one or the other with the gray area in between. So it's a scale Mm -hmm. of trust Mm -hmm. or not trusting. The only way we can actually shift into a different paradigm is to stop playing on the scale. So when Mm -hmm. people say to me, I just need to trust myself, um, to me it's actually they're just playing on the same scale of trust or not trust. So they'll continually go between one or the other. Mm -hmm. It's the same with anything. I need to be happy. I need to be, I don't know, lighter i need to be thinking better or whatever you're always playing on the same scale the only way for us to shift consciousness is to actually shift the paradigm from the scale into something else so if we look at the concept of i don't like because i've had these nasty voices in me and even if i have something that's telling me to go and do something which is um write a book or talk on stage or whatever oh no I'm just making that up or you know that thought comes up it's actually going into well I just need to trust that that's the next level of no 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 I just need to trust that to try and find out what's going on within me I just need to trust that but in the next paradigm trust doesn't exist because it already is Mm. there is but to get into the next paradigm, what we need to do is receive what that paradigm is. And so there's again, another layer above that underneath it, whatever you want to say, wherever Um, the layer is. is. (laughs) I mean, I love the tapestry concept where it's all together. I love that rather than the layers and the levels. You can't separate it. It's all, it's all the one. Like I love the tapestry concept. So, um, so if we're not playing, if we're, if, if we, don't trust so the next levels to don't trust to trust yes that's again chapter one chapter two Mm -hmm. (laughs) um what's next after trust is being Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how can you trust yourself if you're being well it just is you're just being you you're just showing up as you yes trust doesn't exist here because you're just here. Yes. Yeah. I get that. 
that's the paradigm, that's the consciousness shift. And there's 12. So that's just, we're only on level two here. <laughs> Huh. I just see like a person climbing down that like head down climbing down this ladder and they're like it's so dark down there and I'm like it's okay the light's gonna come on as you go down each level like like a little motion sensor is gonna be like bing, or, bing, 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 bing. or accept the darkness and it'll be yeah. revealed <laughs> well yeah exactly it's like it's okay that it's dark down there like yeah it's, it's okay it's just amazing um I think, and, and I just think the thing is, is that most of us just think what we think is true is, will always be true. And, yeah. and it's tough as humans to just in one moment have one truth and then the next moment it doesn't exist. Um, yeah. But if I can just share to everyone that when you play in it, it's actually really fun. It is. <laughs> I think it's so, it's so much fun and the willingness to go in there and poke around is, I think, number one, a, a great act of courage. And I applaud anyone who even like dips a toe into the water, so to speak, because it is, it's a little bit like at first, like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you get in there and you start splashing around and playing, it's like, yeah. it is, it's all, it's all just a fun. And I think, you know, game. we can share that from experience yes it is scary to yeah oh that's a little bit different oh that's that i you know that doesn't make sense or whatever or i can't say that or whatever once i don't know about you but whenever i've said that everything slows down again and mm -hmm. it's like when you take the leap again that whole concept of taking the leap if i can shift the consciousness even around that to help to make that easier again i'm being shown to make why does it have to be easier? Why can't it just be the journey? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. the resistance of dipping the toe is all part of feeling the resistance and acknowledging mm -hmm. the resistance mm -hmm. and then um, realizing that all you need to do is just do it. And then the resistance doesn't exist. Exactly. That's what's cool is that you can abolish things can like literally abolish literally them. just it's, it's almost like the layers just fall down and they just yeah like collapse there's like collapse. a collapse thing yeah yeah and it's kind of cool how something could be true in one moment but they're not true in the next but yeah. you can still see how that can still be an element of truth in some way mm -hmm. but that consciousness shift is so much fun to play in it is mm. it is really really good let's, so. let's keep we, we could keep playing for days <laughs> Well, I, I have been told that we will have another chat. So oh, well, <laughs> we I, you know, I'm this. all for it. Send this me, is send me one. like chapter one. This is, this is like paragraph one, chapter one. <laughs> yeah. Send me, send me some words and I'll like, just see oh, what we get. Fun, I love fun, doing fun. it. I, to me, it's so fun. Cause it's like, I have literally no idea what words and phrases I'm going to hear until I'm hearing them. And it's mm. so to talk about like playing and delighting in the game. It's like, what what are they going to tell me? I cannot wait to find out. Yeah, and it's yeah. like allowing the mystery a little bit around that is part of what I think is really fun. So I look forward and to it. And as humans, I think it's, that's, that's where we're shifting. Well, hopefully we're shifting into that, whether I have to know everything into yeah. let's just see what happens. And it's the curiosity is so exciting to be it in is. curiosity. But I can see, like even for myself, it's very easy to shift, like to go back into the, what am I really doing? Yeah. What am I really doing here? Yeah. It's very easy to play in all those energies. Oh, uh -huh. 100%. I have 100%. But we're, we're not going to on this one. We're going we're gonna to say we're going to have another conversation and it's going to yes. be fun and... It Who always knows? is. Oh, so good to see you. You too. Um, and looking forward to playing more and more on this level of whatever's happening. <laughs> What's unfolding? The unfolding present moment. Oh my gosh. The unfolding present moment. And there is so much, so much in the present moment. It's, it's very exciting. So thank Indeed. you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing all your wisdom with us. My pleasure. And um, looking forward to more conversations. <laughs> Me too. Have an awesome day. I will. Thank you, darling. Bye. <laughs>